Okay, let's take some time and look at the index and match functions. Now, please recognize the index and match functions standalone really don't do a whole heck of a lot. It's only when you integrate them with other functions does real magic happen. Yet, more often than not, you can make a very strong case that you will see the index and match being used together. So the common progression is you'll learn each function separately and then blend them together. Let's start off with the index function. The way the index function works is it will look at a chunk of cells and then it will tell you what it finds at the intersection of a row and a column that you specify. Let's see an example. Here we have this table and on the left side we have the income amount and across the top we have the allowance amount. So what we want to know is if the person makes $50,000 and has an allowance of two, how much should we take out? So let's use the index to figure this out. We'll go up and click on our FX icon type out index, and then we'll just click OK when we get this prompt. From here, we just have to fill in the blanks. The array is just our chunk of cells. So we'll start off by selecting the array, and then it's just a matter of counting out our rows and columns to tell Excel where to look. In this case, we want $50,000. So the $50,000 income happens to live in the one, two, three, four, five, fifth row. So we'll type in five, and then we want an allowance of two, and that happens to live in the one, two, three, third column. From here, we're done. Just click OK, and let's test it. $50,000 is here, allowance of two is here, and it looks like we're in good shape. And that's pretty much it for the index. Now granted, nothing too riveting, and standalone, the index doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. Remember, the index is often integrated with other functions. For now, let's move on to the match function. The match function will tell you what row or column a particular item lives in. Put another way, all the match function is going to do is tell you what position the item you're looking for is in. Yeah, that sounds pretty confusing. Let's see an example to clarify it. Let's start off by looking at this allowance row in our table. What we want to know is if the person entered a zero, one, two, or three, what position is it in? And the match will help us figure that out. Now, honestly, the match is easier if you type it out, so let's go ahead and go for it. In this case, we're looking for an allowance of three, so we'll type out equal match, open parentheses. The lookup value in this case is going to be this cell right here. We'll type a comma. We'll highlight the allowance row, then type a comma. And now here's where people get tripped up. This whole less than exact match greater than nonsense. What exactly is going on here? In real life, you'll wind up using two of these three and they are less than an exact match. The exact match is just that, it's literal. It's going to look for an exact match only. Think of less than as being, I want to find the closest value without going over. And we'll see an example of that here in a couple seconds. For right now, we want to use an exact match because our choices are only zero, one, two, and three. So to finish this formula, we'll type a zero, and there we go. And Excel is telling us that the allowance of three happens to live in the fourth position, which is correct. Now, let's see another example of a match, and this one's going to have a slight twist, yet nothing too difficult. Let's say the person makes $65,000 a year, and we want to know where 65K lives in the list. So in this example, there is no $65,000, so we have to find the closest approximate match. Let's go ahead and type the formula. We'll type out equal match open parentheses, click the income value of 65,000, type a comma, then select our income amount, type a comma. And in this case, we don't want an exact match. What we want to do is type the number one, which will let us find the closest value without going over. So we'll type the number one, close our parentheses, press enter, and it looks like it's working. Just for fun, let's put in a whole bunch of different income amounts just to see what Excel says and it looks like our formula is cooperating. And that does it for the match function. Again, standalone, the match function does not do a whole heck of a lot. In the next section, we will combine the index and the match function, which will allow us to do more sophisticated lookups. So far, we've looked at the index function and the match function. Ultimately, what we can do is combine the index and match together and have it be a one-stop shop for doing sophisticated lookups. Building off our previous example, what we want to have happen is when a person puts in the income and the allowance, we want to have the amount automatically returned. So we'll start by clicking on the FX. We'll then type the index. And the array is going to be this chunk of cells. Now for the row, 
Here is where we can integrate the match function. Let's type match, open parentheses, click on the cell with the salary, type a comma, select the salary range, type a comma, and we'll type a one because we want an approximate match. Close the parentheses. Then we'll jump down to where it says column and we'll type match, open parentheses, select our allowance amount, type a comma, select the range up top, type a comma, and type a zero because we want an exact match. Close the parentheses and let's take it for a test drive. Not too bad. We have achieved our objective. So let's wrap up the segment by looking at a more practical example. Here we have a list of our employees, their salary amounts, and the amount they want withheld. And we want to know what amount should be withheld based off the combination of their salary and the withholding amount. So over here, we have our table of data. And to pull this off, we have to do a combination of the index and match. By now, you know the drill. We'll click the FX and pull up the index. And then for the array, we want this chunk of cells. So we'll select it. In this case, we want the cells to be locked in place. So we'll press the F4 key. Next, for the row, we'll type match, open parentheses, click on the salary, we'll type a comma, we'll then select this range right here, and then press F4 to lock that in. In this case, we want the closest match, so we'll type a one, close parentheses, then we'll jump down to where it says column, type match, open parentheses, click the withholding, type a comma, we'll then select these cells over here and press F4 to lock them in. In this case, we want an exact match, so we'll type a zero, close parentheses, click OK, drag the formula down, and check it out. We are all set. And that will do it for this one. We hope you've enjoyed it, been able to learn a lot, and we will see you in the next one.